Hi there, my name is Memo, this is my channel, House Planty Goodness, and essentially it's a place where I like to geek out about my big passion. You might be able to see some of it around me, it's tropical houseplants. Today, I think this might have been a bit of a long-awaited video, I want to talk about general anthurium care. And I didn't want to put out a video about this topic too, too soon because Anthuriums are a bit of a step up. A lot of people get quite comfortable with philodendrons. Anthuriums are almost the next level up, so they can be a bit fussier. I want to talk about some of my experiences with my anthurium and the ones that I have found easy and the ones that I have found tricky. So I'll bring up different anthuriums. This might be quite a choppy video in terms of bringing up different anthuriums and talking about them, and I'll talk about their care as we go through things. So I'll bring up one of the quintessential anthurium that a lot of people want to add to their collection is this one, which is the king anthurium, that gives a bit of a hint, and a lot of people want the queen anthurium. I still don't have the queen anthurium, which is the anthurium warraquianum, but I will show you the king, or one of the two kings that I've got actually, and you might be able to see one of the other plants that I want to talk about in just a moment, but let's talk about the king anthurium. Let me pick it up really quickly. Got a handy table down there at the side of me, and this is my Anthurium Fichii, or the King Anthurium, and you can see sometimes people call these ruffles abs, they are very very cool, these leaves are getting huge, and this is one of my two King Anthurium. One I got as a larger plant that probably had leaves about this size, it came to me entirely with root rot, it was so disheartening. I did find a plug plant from a local seller around here, which is Turner Tropical in the UK. Shout out to Carl who owns Turner Tropical, amazing, amazing, amazing. And I know a few people got um, plants when you found some as plug plants. And yeah, mine I've had some great, great success with. The leaves are steadily getting bigger, I'm still managing to maintain quite a few leaves on there, so one, two, three, four, five, 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 yeah. And um, I can count me, <laughs> but uh, let's talk about that really quickly as well. With a lot of anthuriums, the larger the leaves get, especially in household conditions, even me with the conservatory with the high humidity and anthuriums do love a good bit of high humidity if you can give it to them, then uh, you might see when the leaves start getting larger and larger and larger, most people, I think it's the curse of the three leaves, most people will only be able to keep three leaves on the plant at any given time. And I think maybe the reason why I'm keeping as many leaves as I can on this plant at the moment is because some of the older leaves are a bit more juvenile. So. I'm sure at some point it might end up being just the three leaves again, but these plants can get quite huge. So I'm okay with it just having the three leaves because space, like I don't have any at the moment. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so that's one thing I want to talk about is don't be disappointed if you can only maintain a certain number of leaves. I want to say it's normal, obviously if it's in its natural environment it would be keeping a lot more leaves, but it can be quite challenging to keep more leaves than this. I think one of the quintessential experts, purely because of her passion and the side of her anthurium collection is I think the Plant Meow channel or something like that. If I'm getting it wrong, I'll put it somewhere up here. She's amazing, go and check her out. She's got a spectacular collection. Granted some of them she got as mature plants as well, but she's very, very adept at keeping them happy. This is one of the anthuriums, by the way, that is relatively easy to take care of because it's got relatively leathery leaves. It's not got velvety or suede type leaves. Those tend to be harder, I'm not going to lie. But let me put this one down and I'll pick up the big beast from next to me and let's talk about that. There we go. So this is the big mama that I had right next to me. And also I just want to show you this because it's super exciting. I have been able and hopefully that might, yes, you can see a slightly swollen inflorescence there. I've been able to successfully pollinate this and I've done pollination now on my Vitarifolium, which we'll see in a minute, my Metallicum, and this has been a point of contention with a lot of people because we're still out to find if it's actually a Metallicum. Some people are saying this is too wide for a Metallicum, it might be something else. If you've got thoughts, I am still open to suggestions. 
Uh, but I know a lot of people said, look, check with the influence and see what happens. I'm waiting for the berries to come up and that might give a bit more of an indication, but very, very cool plant nonetheless. I always find that when the leaves go to die off, so a new leaf can come out, I start getting it kind of going yellow in places and then it drops off. But yeah, the leaves can get absolutely huge. I'll do a head test just so you can see the size of that leaf there. But this has got a bit of a sheen to it. It's not completely leathery, but I have to say this is one of my anthurium that really isn't that fussy. And I'm pretty sure I've overwatered it sometimes. I'm pretty sure I've underwatered it sometimes and it's been okay. This is one of the plants that I have got in pond, even though you might not be able to see. So if I can tilt it slightly, uh, I don't want to move it too close because I don't want to snap the inflorescence. But you might be able to see one of the things I want to talk about, which is having a collar of moss, of damp moss around the base of the stem of the plant. Let me put this down because it is very heavy. But yes, definitely have a moss collar around the base because some of the newer area roots that come in can get into that moss and it almost tricks it a bit into thinking that it's supported. And I found with that technique, you tend to get more mature leaves faster. So that's a top tip for you. See if you can put a moss collar around the growing stem of your anthurium and you might see it's not necessarily going to make the growth any faster, but it will make, at least in my experience, it's meant that the leaves mature just that bit faster. So let me bring up another anthurium and let's talk about another thing. So another anthurium is the anthurium forgetii. And you can see a lot of the anthurium will have that quintessential lobing at the top. So it kind of looks like the top of a heart. This is one that doesn't. This has got a fused sinus, which would be that dip in those leaves. And it is very cool. I don't know which specific version of the forgetii I've got. And I don't know why, but the more mature, this is the, the largest leaf that I have. I got this quite small. You can see how teeny tiny that first leaf that I got it with. And this was already growing from the cellar in pond. So I kept it in pond. I kept it in self-watering. And this one just keeps on going on it. I don't know generally if forgetty eyes are particularly difficult, but for me, this has been okay. This is getting kind of medium light. It seems to be happy. It's not a fast grower necessarily, but yeah, very, very cool little anthurium and not ones generally with anthuriums depending on the size obviously but they're not ones that are going to need most of them i think most of mine actually maybe with the exception of my crystallinum they don't actually even have a janky support stick they don't grow very tall very quickly so they don't need that support stick very early on you might need to give it something some form of a support when it starts getting a bit taller but most of them seem to be okay and the trick with the moss around the growing stem will help with slightly more mature leaves. Interestingly, I haven't done the moss collar on this and I'd forgotten that I hadn't done it so I need to do that now. It might mean that I might get some slightly larger leaves which will be kind of cool. But yeah, definitely plants that, and I definitely didn't want to talk about this until I'd kind of had a few of them in pond, definitely ones that do really really well in pond. And let me bring up the plant that I was worried, even though I had other anthuriums in pond, whether or not it was going to like it. So the anthurium that I was worried about putting in pond was the anthurium regal. And this is one that's slightly velvety and I'll bring it in so you can see the foliage a bit more clearly. And you can see what I mean now about the sinus. That is the sinus and that's where on the forgetty eye you can see it was rounded at the top. And I quite like the forgetty eye because it looks a bit I don't know, maybe I'm just imagining things, but it looks a bit like the back of a turtle shell. So I thought it was kind of cool. I, when I was growing up as a child, I had both tortoises and turtles. So very, very cool for me. It kind of harkens back to my childhood. But this is one that I was a bit worried because I know there's been a lot of people that were saying this is a relatively fussy plant. It hasn't been, and I want to touch wood with me. I know this is one that's similar to the Anthurium or Aquianum in terms of needing higher humidity. I don't know if I'm just fortunate because obviously the humidity in this conservatory is generally quite good. So maybe I'm fortunate in that respect. You can see some crisping that I've cut off on the older leaves, but these are the two leaves that came with the plant. And they already had some of that crisping on there, so it hasn't really got any worse. I have got a collar on this and I can already see a new growth point, which is awesome. 
It's interesting because normally you'd get the growth point coming close to where the previous leaf is, but I'm seeing a growth point that's now coming on from one of the lower leaves. So I'm wondering whether or not a second little node has activated, which would be absolutely spectacular. I will say about this is I've done the same thing with my Anthurians that I do with my Philodendron, where I give them an acclimation period when it comes to pond before putting them in self-watering with pond. So this is just getting watered normally as it would do with, uh, if it was in the soil mix that it was previously. This is a plant also that has moved a few media. So it hasn't been the fastest growing for me, but I knew that ultimately I was gonna get it into pond. I don't know why I didn't go from the sphagnum moss, the wet sphagnum moss that I got it from the uh, cellar and put it straight into perlite, not perlite, pond. Actually, no, I do remember this. It's because I hadn't found a lot, an awful lot of videos that were talking about this plant being as fussy as it was if it did okay in ponds. So it took a while for me to build up the courage to kind of say, you know what, let's try it. I think this has also become a bit more readily available. It's still not the easiest Anthurium to find. So I'm just like, you know what, let's give it a try. I haven't, I, I can at least give it a go and see what happens. And so far, touch wood, <laughs> it's doing okay. So I will put this one down, but this is a slightly slower growing Anthurium and you will see that some of them are faster and some of them are not, but they're all Anthurium and in my experience, they just take their time, essentially. So let me put this down and I'll bring up one that maybe a lot of people have not seen. So this is an Anthurium that a lot of people might have not have seen and I think this is the Anthurium bulatus. And you can see that it's quite a long leafed Anthurium and it's gonna have some ruffles. I think it does also get wider. Uh, and you can see some of the previous leaves on there. This was teeny tiny when I first got it. It was a, probably the leaves were only about this big and it only had two leaves. So it's doing quite well. It is in pond. It is also got the moss collar. It's doing quite well. And let's talk about pests because obviously you can see that that leaf might have a bit of damage and this is a newer leaf. I don't want to handle it too much, but that one does definitely have some damage as does that. Now, I don't know specifically with this one. Generally, for most of my Anthurium, again, I'll touch wood, I've not really had an awful lot of pest pressures with them. Maybe the odd mealy bug that has fallen on it, but they don't multiply quite as quickly on my Anthurium, at least in my experience. But I've not really had many pest pressures, so I don't know what is chewing, and it's annoying because it chews on the younger leaves. It's no, I can't see it on any of the mature leaves. I don't know because this is close to a window in my conservatory whether or not little baby slugs are coming in and they're eating it, which... Because <laughs> dealing with all the usual pests isn't difficult enough. I also have to contend with the occasional slug getting in here. <laughs> ah, fun times. But, um, but yeah, generally most Anthuriums I find aren't that pest prone in my experience. I am sure some people might disagree with me down below, but please do let me know. I'd like to know because then at least I can keep my eyes open. But a few years now, I've not really had many pest pressures on most of mine. But let me put this down and I'll grab a big beast of an Anthurium as well. So this is one that I don't show too often because let's put it this way. The net pot that I've got it in is tied with wire to the shelf because obviously it can be quite forward heavy but this and i'm trying to see so i don't like end up knocking the um, uh this is a fern leaf cactus at the top and then also there's a fan so danger all around but this and i'll bring it up as high as i can get it and i still probably won't be able to get the entire leaf in the shot is the anthurium vitarifolium so let me see if i can bring up one of the biggest leaves so you might be able to see quite the level of that leaf. <laughs> it's absolutely huge. If you want jungle vibes, go for these kind of pendant type of anthuriums. They are very cool. I can't talk about the rest of them. I can talk about the vitarifolium that I've got in my care. And you might be able to see if I bring this in a bit closer and you can see that little aerial root there. They are very, very thick roots almost reminiscent of a Phalaenopsis orchid. So they're quite, quite chunky. They still have that silveriness as well that the Phalaenopsis will have. And again, this isn't really that surprising because a lot of people tend to forget that Phalaenopsis, are, um, not just Phalaenopsis, a lot of orchids are epiphytic. So they grow in a similar way off the side of trees, the same way that some Anthuriums will do and Philodendrons as well. So it's 
it's quite cool that you'll see similar morphology even in the roots like that. So this, because of those kind of very, very thick, you saw that root that I showed you a moment ago, very, very thick aerial roots, and the roots on the inside are quite thick as well. This one is one that doesn't mind going fully dry. That anthurium in general for their care, and this is why PON works as well as it does for them, and it can be quite tricky, I find, even with an aroid mix. They like to have evenly moist soil or media to grow in, but very, very airy because they can go towards root rot quite quickly. <laughs> and I found even with a light airy aroid soil mix, even with making it even lighter, there was still always a bit of a risk of root rot. So this is why a plant like the Vitarifolium, again, just, just ridiculousness in terms of the length, um, but like the Vitarifolium, another one that's re relatively easily available, which is the Clarinervium, that's also got relatively chunky roots as well. And that's one, uh, ironically enough, the story of my life, I can do the difficult things, I can't do the easy things. I was not able to keep it happy because I think I overwatered that one. So that's good for people that might be overwaterers. And it's a good kind of first step into the slightly more finicky anthuriums, not the traditional kind of flamingo looking uh, flower looking uh, anthuriums, the colourful ones that you'll get in most garden centres. That's a good one to start off because they're a bit more readily available. They look quite cool. They've still got that heart shaped leaf. It's quite a thick leaf as well. This one does have a thick leaf as well. But yeah, that's a good one to start off. So generally, most anthurium will like evenly moist soil, but airy soil and not to go fully dry. This and the Clarinervium are ones that don't mind. I actually found with both of them, they kind of prefer it to go fully dry before being watered. So let me put this down because <laughs> it is surprisingly heavy. So I was gonna bring up my Crystallinum as well to show you, but it is very ingrained within the shelf and it means that it's got leaves on all sides of the shelf. So I'm very dubious to whether or not if I ever move that plant fully out of the shelf if I'm not going to end up ripping half of the leaves. So I just won't be showing you that one, but take my word for it. I think the leaves on that were probably about that big at the moment, if not larger. And that is one that is also a good one to move on to after maybe the Clarinervium. The Crystallinum is a good next step before you look at doing something like the Thichii or the Queen Anthurium. And this might not be a popular opinion, but a lot of people get enamored with the Queen Anthurium. And I can understand it. I'm not entirely sure if I'm taking with it just yet, but I've not seen one in person. And it's like going from kind of basic level that might be the Clarinervium to full on advance in a video game, for instance. You're kind of setting yourself up for failure ever so slightly with the ones that is possibly one of the fussier anthuriums that you can get. I know there are even fussier ones than that, but go easy on yourself. You usually will get something like that that tends to be a bit of an import. It might have a mature leaf. It might lose all of its leaves, but you can still bring it back. And I've heard good stories of people becoming a bit more adept with dealing with their Warakuanums. They are very, very cool plants. And if you're a bit of a doting plant parent, anthuriums are a cool one for you to do because they will keep you busy and guessing and doing things for a while. But yeah, just to summarize at the very end, light, airy, as much as possible, air and evenly moist growing media. About medium light, I don't know, I think I've mentioned it for some of the other plants. Medium to bright and direct light is fine for some of these. Uh, most of them won't like to be fully dry, but there are some exceptions to the rule. Having a moss collar around, and I touched briefly on humidity, but give it as much humidity as you can. Some of these anthuriums will appreciate that as much as possible. They're not quite, quite as fussy, and they won't crisp up as quickly as maybe a calathea or a prayer plant, but they will appreciate this. Yes, there are some that will do better in a drier, not better, but they won't die a quick death in a very dry environment, but try to give them better levels of humidity, basically, if you can. 
And I think that's everything I wanted to say on this. If you've got any questions, comments, obviously do drop them in the comments down below. I'd love to have that conversation with you. We're getting a good little bit of a community growing down in the comments. And I like the fact that you're all interacting with each other as well, which is really cool. But yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed. Hopefully I shall see you here again. And I truly, truly hope that you have a great rest of your day. Thanks. Bye.